mouth for my morning run. I'm just digging it on in, checking out uh, articles, and this comes across the feed. It's being brought to us by Deadspin. Now, I do not watch the NBA draft. I don't watch any draft. I believe I will see the greatness when they play on the court or in the playoffs. Like, honestly, that's the only part of any league's season that I really watch and pay attention to is the playoffs. I don't really care for the regular season anymore in any of these sports. I'm sorry. Just eh, let's get to the point. Um, so, so when it comes to drafts and, um, you know, fantasy, I believe that these leagues know how to brand, know how to market. And, you know, they want to make their leagues be profitable 24 seven. They want to be clocking dollars every second of every day. And damn it, you got to respect the hustle. So this, I didn't, I, I didn't know that this had happened, but Chauncey Billups drags out tired trope says Zion Williamson was raised right because he had two parents in his home, quote unquote, by Gabe Fernandez. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. With the first pick in the NBA draft, ESPN draft analyst Chauncey Billups selected one of the worst possible approaches to complimenting a player's character. After Zion Williamson had finished taking his ceremonial photo with a commissioner, Adam Silver, and was making his way over to ESPN's Maria Maria Taylor for his first interview as a New Orleans Pelican. Before Zion could get on the air or could get on the mic, Billups decided to throw in one extra compliment to the former Duke player's personality as a team player. He said Zion was raised right because he had two parents in his home. Statistically, yeah. I mean, if you want to be 100% honest with it, because I, I remember watching a little Zion Williamson um, during a couple of games at, at Duke, but you know, like I said, get to the league, get to the playoffs, show me what you got. But, you know, I mean, if he's this good kid that everybody's claiming him to be, because they, they're they all good kids, aren't they? They were saying, oh, man, Kellen, William, Kellen Winslow Jr. is a good kid. Like, come on, yeah. <laughs> what was the other dude? Um, Hernandez, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, he was a good kid. Yeah, mm, yeah, sure. Deal is, is that, like, when you have a two-parent household, and I can't believe Terry Crews got dragged for this, but yes, when it's one parent, you are malnourished. You are being brought up in, with without, you're not being brought up whole, okay? And that's not to say that death and tragedy don't happen in life. They do. But as far as our culture is concerned, there's been this movement since the 70s to rid men from the household and, get, and put it all on mom. Oh, how great mom is. Because that's really what we're talking about here. I mean, it's the, the percentage of single dads out there is minimal compared to single moms. And the statistics that come from single mother, basically households, the 70 percent. It's just like at 70 percent, there's there's a 70 percent chance that the life that that person lives will not be the most prosperous and productive as it as it could have been. You know, that's just summing up all the all these years and decades of, of statistics. But Mr. Fernandez here is apparently offended that he would say such a thing, because, you know, when that's what I'm not, I'm just going to make this assumption here. But if that's the life, you know, then you're going to defend it to the end. Right. I mean, there's been instances of parents that like walk out on their kid talking about, hey, work wonders for me. I did great. And then walk out on their kids. So <laughs> really, there's been this push to, you know, um, basically make all households equal um, and, and really make it seem as if, you know, like any household is as good for a child as a nuclear household. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. That's just not statistically true at all. But yeah, let's get into Mr. Fernandez's here arguments as into why not. This is a good thing. The clear implications of Billups' statement is that the players who did not have two parents in the home, like, for example, fourth overall pick DeAndre Hunter, were not raised right. That implied point is further driven home with the next sentence being about discipline. Yeah, because that's what fathers provide. One would think there'd be so many different things to talk about with Zion Williamson, given the constant media attention he's gotten over the past year or so. But I suppose that these this kind of BS character assessments are a fine substitute for basic inoffensive Look, no 
one's ever said, and I, I don't think anyone's ever said or ever tried to discount. Like you know, when a when a when a people come from single parent households, yes, you you have that parent and they're doing it all. But the deal is, is that what tends to be forgotten or tends to be overlooked is the parents' choices that led to them being a single parent, and that comes for men and women, but more uh, more along the lines women, and they basically play this like little lotto game to be 100% real with you. I mean, look at like Kevin, Dur- like Kevin Durant's mom, LeBron James mom, like most of these guys who, you know, oh, single parent mom, single parent households. What would their mother be without them? You know, their mother would be, be out here in the streets right next to everybody else. But they sit there and like, yo, they, they want to uplift the person that they came out of. And trust me, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I do believe in that, but is also a matter of taking into account the choices that they made to get them there. Because just as easily as Kevin Durant's mom gave birth to Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant's mom could have gave birth to Mike Mittens from 18th Street that got 15 felonies just out on warrants right now. You know, so, <laughs> so, you know, let's be real. And this sentiment that, you know, oh my goodness, two parents in the home, that doesn't matter. That It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean it means the world. It really does. And people who present this as if it's a bad thing are people who are, I mean, I hate to say this and I hate to make such a broad assessment, but you just, you're showing your butt hurt as to your situation nine times out of 10, or you're just one of these super liberal types that are like, yeah, women and men are, women and men are the same thing. Let me tell you something. There's literally, literally not because here's the thing, each and every person is a product of two people coming together and a P blowing an L into a V. Okay. And so those, that, that P and that V need to be together and need to be raising that person together so they can have a very well-rounded view as to how to operate within society. Now, does it always work? Of course not. There are plenty of people from two parent households. I mean, what was the Menendez brothers or something like that? They killed their parents. I mean, no, things aren't perfect at all. But if you want to play the statistic game, then that's really all we have to go on is the numbers. Yeah, it, 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 it is the it is the best shot that that child has towards being a productive member of society. Now, is it to be it can it be done other ways? Of course. And I really don't want to knock Mr. Fernandez here or anybody who is from a single parent household, but it deal is is that we have a government and we have a society that's made it very easy and made it very convenient for those households to exist because you know we've really gone we're a very capitalistic society and giving women money and power you know they they go and spend it both the money and the power so (laughs) but and, and and but a large part of that has required the absence of the authority figure the absence of the male authority figure you look at urban communities right I mean, they are just they run amok with chaos and um, deterioration and, you know, just um, emotional, like uh, so overly emotional, very feminine, very eggshell type situations. And what is very apparent is that, you know, a lot of the people, a lot of particularly the younger people from these areas don't have that authority figure at home. I mean, end of the day, and I sincerely doubt that there is too many people that can argue this point. But at the end of the day, it does all start at home. What type of home life a person has and school can't give it to them. Programs can't give it to them. The only people that can give it to them are the two people that made it. Right. So that home life is the most important thing in any child's development. I mean. And so, yeah, that's about it. All the Internet stuff. Like it if you liked it. Sub if you enjoy my fantastic voice. Share because sharing is caring and speak. Let me know. What do you think? I mean, can you argue with that? Can you argue with just the balance of having the two people who you share your closest genetic bond to? Not adopted parents, not anything else like that. Biological parents need to be taking care of their biological children. And we as a society should be pressing towards making that more um, more advantageous. We should really be incentivizing towards um, investment in our nuclear families more than anything else. With that being said, till the next one.